Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Photo Tokens Mystery. This will be part 400. We're initiating a new lesson title, Rise of the Fourth Empire. <clears throat> Scripture indicates when the Lord pronounces his great judgments upon the earth and the human race, one of his pronouncements will be to the four winds. Four of the four winds. The four winds are the guardians of the heavens. And his pronouncement to them will be to release the four empire kings from the great hidden sea. Now this sea was locked up at the fall of Lucifer. At that time, many were imprisoned in different locations. These particular individuals were imprisoned in within the confines of this sea, which was then sealed up. Turn to the book of Job, 38th chapter, verses 8 to 11. What you will find as you read the scripture is that there are many places in the creation which are storehouses, residences that date back to the Luciferian revolt against the Lord, particularly in the spiritual realm. There are places in the heavens, there are places in the subterranean regions, there are places in what would be called companion dimensions in which these beings are imprisoned awaiting the time of the end in which they will be released. Some won't be released, some will. Job 38, starting in verse 8. <clears throat> oh, who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, in thick darkness a swaddling band for it. So he's describing the sea as being enveloped by a cloud, as being <clears throat> confined by doors, bars, and gates, so that the sea cannot traverse beyond a certain point. It's waiting a time in which the doors, bars, and gates, and cloud will be dismantled. At that point, it's going to become an integral part of the earth. We see references to this sea consistently. Turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms 104. 24 to 31. Psalms 104, 24 to 31. This is the sea in which Elohim is active. This is a sea in which, <clears throat> because the kings have been confined, they currently have no influence. And it's free to exist basically to the degree in which it was created. Psalms 104, 24, and we're going to start verse 24, and we're going to read to verse 31. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom. In wisdom hast thou made them. All the earth is full of thy riches. Now understand, <clears throat> when he's talking about the earth, he says all the earth. The earth is not a planet. The earth is a matrix, a system 
of interlocking habitations <coughs> which exist at different planes of existence. Some <coughs> are more dense than others. This is the earth he's referring to. Then he goes on <coughs> to talk about the great sea. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. It's talking about <coughs> a vast, a great advanced civilization of men, of course not human, but men who have advanced their civilization to a point in which their ships are beautiful to behold. They sail on this great sea back and forth. They have vast islands that are also uh, composites of this sea. And he goes on to talk about some of the creatures in this sea. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. <coughs> These wait all upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thine hand and they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and now renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever, the Lord shall rejoice in his works. This is giving us an insight into abodes that are part of the earth system. This sea is going to play a major role in the times of the beginning of sorrows on into the tribulation era. We're going to take a look at its, the time in which it becomes active again. The Lord is going to speak in his pronouncement to the four winds, the guardians of the heavens that hold sway over <clears throat> this great sea. And when he speaks to them, he's going to dispatch them to free the kings that have been bound in this great sea since the fall of Lucifer. Turn to Daniel, 7th chapter, verse 1 to 3. Daniel, 7th chapter, verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the, of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds, four spirits of the heavens, strove upon the great sea. The word strove there comes from a Hebrew term meaning rushed. So the Lord speaks and immediately they, they <clears throat> respond by rushing upon this great sea. And as they rush upon this sea, they dismantle the shackles of the four kings that are going to be released. 
Verse 3, four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. I want to read briefly verse 4. The first was like a lion. That's all I want. Verse 5. Behold another beast, second like a bear. Drop down to verse 6. After this I beheld another like a leopard. <clears throat> now turn to Revelation 13. Revelation 13, verse 1 to 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. This is the great hidden sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Upon his horns ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now notice what it says in verse 2. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet is the feet of a bear. His mouth is the mouth of a lion. It's the same animals that Daniel sees in his visions. Talking about the kings that arise up out of the sea. Are going to take dominion. Each one in his turn takes dominion. And establishes certain things dealing with events in the sea. Uh, Daniel and John having the same vision or are they having separate visions but with the same characters involved well it's the same picture okay it's the empire dealing with the hidden sea and they're giving different insights into it it's expanding into okay. what it is daniel does not see the seven and ten right john does because it's giving us the function more so than Daniel's giving. Daniel's giving the reality of where it comes from, what these individuals do. This is a king, he's like a leopard. This is a king, he's like a bear. This is a king, he's like an eagle or whatever it is. <clears throat> but you see, you have the same kings. One is giving you what they are, the other is giving you what they're doing. Daniel goes into extensive activity of what each king does. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates this dominion, the sea, exists currently in an earth matrix. In other words, another dimension that's going to be connected to this dimension. At one time it was joined with this dimension, this earth, but at the fall of Lucifer, you had separation take place so that... <clears throat> the Father's plan could begin to progress. Since we know that uh, Shambhala would be, I guess, the location of the Harlot City to come, mm -hmm. should we understand that the hidden sea at this point is in a different dimension to that of what will become the Harlot City? Yes, but they're gonna become connected. At what point they become connected? Uh, at the time of the beginning of sorrow. Okay. Fourth Empire is altered. Right, so the whole thing is connected at when that When that time. takes place, all of this is going to become a reality. Okay. But not necessarily, you know, made visible because the Harlot City, I understand, is hidden for 70 years. Well, at that time, no, the Harlot City is going to be integral. It says she's, she goes, she becomes neutralized for 70 years, but at the end of the 70 years, she comes to commit fornication with all the nations of the earth. So at the time of the beginning of sorrows, when these guys are released, they're going to progress for a certain time, and the harlot city is going to make connection with them and ultimately dominate them. So it's integrated at the beginning of sorrows, but humans can't see it for 70 years. No, at the end of 70 years, everybody's going to see it. Remember, we had the lesson last night, all the cities outside of the communities. I understand. The point I'm making is, 
from the beginning of sorrows mm -hmm. to I'm taking that the 70 years starts at the beginning of sorrows. No, no, no. Okay, that's my mistake. No. So what should I have been thinking of? The, the, the Holy City is in, in the 70 year period. Okay. Begin of sorrows is when she's going to come out of it ultimately and right. make contact okay. with. Thank you. No problem. So what we find here, these things are going to happen at the beginning of sorrows. I can't stress enough. I've been saying this for a long, 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 long time. Everything is going to change. The world that we see now, the world that we think is so real and so enduring is going to experience radical change. And if we're not prepared to enter into that change, we're going to go down because we won't be able to function in the world that is coming. That's why the scripture talks about he who would lose his life will save it. He who will save his life, embracing what you're entering into and not holding on to what's being left behind, will continue to grow and thrive. The Holy Spirit will take us through all of this if we allow him to. If you depend on your senses to take you through this, I think, I think make the, it. the thing we should take away from what you've just said is that irrespective of what you do, you're going to lose your life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you do that when you enter into Christ. Well, some people seem to think that they can hold on to it, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Fatal mistake. Yeah. But let's go on. So we're talking about the release of the four kings. The four kings are going to dominate this great sea. They're going to corrupt it. The harlot city will surface ultimately and dominate the kings. <clears throat> Scripture indicates the Luciferian kings will dominate the sea as well as the surface world after their release from captivity. Remember what the scripture says, the fourth empire is going to devour the whole earth and it's going to section it. It's going yes. to fragment yes. it. It's going to bring it under their dominion. This sea at the same time is going to be connected to the earth. It's going to be the headquarters of the kings. Turn to Ezekiel 26. Just before chapter. you go to Ezekiel, excuse me, mm -hmm. that's a good question. So since we know the beast, the god of forces, the strange god, and whoever else, have each part of that section that you're referring to, somebody who lives in the beast section, just for example, does he know that these four are, are, are colluding? Or all he knows is it's just the beast? No, you know, you're looking at different phases. Okay. This is the first phase. It's pre-rapture. Mm. After the rapture, you're going to enter into another phase. The tribulation era phase. Tribulation era is going to divide into two. First half, second half. The people you're talking about dominate the second half okay. of the tribulation. The first half, you have a certain group that surfaces first and have a period of time of dominion and then their dominion ebbs and they're replaced. So it's Shishak, in other words. Right. Yes. And is, is Shishak looked at as having sections as well, or the entirety of it is Shishak? Shishak is the fourth empire. Yes. But it's divided into phases. First phase, beginning of sorrows, mm -hmm. where you have the king's harlot city. Second phase, harlot city is destroyed, ten kings okay. take dominion. Each time you have this phase shift, you have a shift in reality. Because these are beings that manifest their own reality. And so each phase it may or may not be sectioned depending on who sure. decides to do what. Sure. All right. Yes. You're looking, these are beings that are planetary. Mm. They go off the charts. Okay, Ezekiel 26, to get an idea <clears throat> of what's happening here. Ezekiel 26, we want to read verses 15 to 17. <coughs> Talking about the sea. The sea is going to be dominated by the harlot city. The harlot city is going to be destroyed. The kings <coughs> of the earth, 
or actually they're the kings of the sea at this time <coughs> are going to be connected with the harlot city and the things that take place there we're in Ezekiel 26 starting in verse 15 to 17 this is a destruction of the harlot city and the response of the kings. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus. Tyrus <clears throat> is an Old Testament name for the harlot city. Shall not the isle shake at the sound of thy fall? What isles is he talking about? The isles that are in the sea. When the sea becomes prominent there are huge continents that come with it <clears throat> when the wounded cry when the slaughter is made in the midst of thee then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones lay away their robes put off their broidered garments and they shall clothe themselves with trembling they shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and be astonished at thee. <clears throat> the kings that are released to take dominion over the sea then are influenced by the harlot city for a protracted period of time before the rapture and after the rapture all the way to the second half of the tribulation period. At that point <clears throat> the harlot is destroyed by the ten kings that take place constitute the second half of the tribulation period there's a power shift these experience a loss of power and prestige to the ten kings that are now taking over the system harlot city is destroyed her power is neutralized the beast now is going to dominate all things that takes place long after the rapture, long after right. the saints are in heaven. Yes. The ten kings you're talking about are the ones who actually give the mortal head wound. Yes. 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 <clears throat> but that's long in the future. Just giving a cursory view of the influence of the sea. <clears throat> it's going to dominate the earth because the kings come from the sea, they dwell in the sea. They dominate the sea and the land <coughs> constituting the first phase of the beginning of sorrows. Now it's hard for us to grasp this because you can't see it here now. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a totally different picture. Humans are running things. This is Adamic order, Adamic civilization. Everything's Adamic. When this happens, the Adamic race goes into oblivion as far as being influential. Everything from that point becomes Luciferian. We talked about that last night. What position does man have in the middle of all this? Turn to Revelation 17. We'll go over it again. Revelation 17. <clears throat> the people you see now the movers and shakers, what will they be doing at this time? When the sea becomes prominent. Revelation 17, verse 1 to 2. There came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth, the inhabitants of the earth, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The human race is neutralized. 
in light of the Luciferian influence on the earth. Turn to verse 15, same chapter. He saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. This constitutes the human race. They are under the influence of the harlot city. The only ones that are free from the influence of the harlot city are the saints of God in the communities that have been established by the Lord. Outside of that, the human race is little more than a sock puppet for the Luciferians. Uh, something for their pleasure. The average person Revelation, the ninth chapter, verse 20. Turn there. And you see, this is what we're heading for. Revelation, the ninth chapter, verse 20. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. The average individual is going to be an idol worshiper who will not have an understanding of the time of day outside of what he is given by his God. Everybody is going to have a God. That God is going to be the guide of their life. They're going to look, their world will be centered upon what their God gives them as a reality. The objective ability to understand life is going to be lost to the human race from that point on. That's why the Lord comes and gathers his people and settles them in an area of protection so they can grow and understand and be ready for the things that are happening on the earth. Do you believe the objective loss or the loss of objectivity, I should say, uh, constitutes a, a dumbing down of the human mentality. Turn to Revelation 13. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Starting in verse 4. <clears throat> and they worship the dragon. Who worshiped the dragon? The human <laughs> race. They worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Drop down to verse 8. Revelation 13. And all... All, A-L-L, -L, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This is the destiny, destiny of the human race. I can't, I can't emphasize it more. I understand, but my question still stands. Yes. Are they dumber mentally at this point than they were, let's just say, today? Of course. To the degree that of they course. are incapable of thinking. Because look, let me explain why I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. The influence can influence a Rhodes professor yes. who is highly intelligent. Yes. And the influence can remove his intelligence. Yes. He's still intelligent, yes. but the influence <coughs> wipes that out. Yes. So the question is, is the influencing wiping out the intelligence, or are they actually Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, compared to 
humans uh, 2.0? They're grubs. They have the mentality of a weed. Okay. Okay. If you have people today <clears throat> that you can influence them out of their gender, mm. and you're yes. born a man and somebody can tell you you're a woman. That's a great point. Or a dog. Yeah. And you can do that today. Sure. What will you attribute that to? Is he got? Uh, is he dumbed down, or is he able to objectively evaluate, or where? He's dumbed down. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So we do see drunk and the wine of fornication. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a an elixir. There is a an altered state of consciousness as a result of her influence, mm -hmm. which does the dumbing down that you're speaking of of the human race. Where well. What he's pointing out is the dumbing down happens even today, even before we get to that wine, that darkness. The dumbing down today at least comes from one source. The dumbing down here is going to come from a multiplicity of sources. Right. Your God is going to tell you one thing. The Holy City is going to right. tell you something else. If you're around to see the beast, he's going to give you something else. The mind of man is going to be a jumbled, warped, uh, detestation hmm. ma ma uh, uh, molded by an insane demonic luciferian intelligence so if you're a fence setter and you uh are going to go through this stuff <laughs> you probably ought to uh make some changes to today a little more study time you know the fall the fallacy of this is people think this is a far this is far away sure oh, we got time this couldn't possibly happen I would have news for that person, it's already happening. People you're talking about are born again Christians. <clears throat> Demonic influence is increasing. It will increase arithmetically than geometrically. Yes. It will, when, when the scripture talks about devour the earth, fourth empire is going to devour the earth by its influence. It's going to envelop the human race in a reality, number one, it's not ready for, never imagined, and will be totally <clears throat> unable to resist. The only ones that will have a chance will be those that have the spirit in them. Mm. The rest of the human race doesn't have a chance. Because on a human level, you cannot, you cannot combat this type of opposition because it's mental it's spiritual and the human race is geared for the sensory aspect yes, only yes 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 if people can't contend today if you have rampant mental illness hmm. flooding the human race today and these 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 beings are confined what are you going to have here when they openly materialize and they can just stare you in the face and, 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 and they can read your thoughts, they can read your emotions, they can tell you from everything you did from the time you were born to the time you stand before them. What kind of, what, what kind of defense does an individual have against that? No, none so. Yep. Except for the Lord, of course. That's why the script is warning us yes. now. <coughs> this is in the next principle. <coughs> scripture indicates until its fall, the Holland City will dominate the sea and its dominion. We read that. Now, <coughs> turn back to Ezekiel 26. 17 to 21. The Luciferians are going to take over the harlot, uh, the, 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 the sea as well as the earth and corrupt it thoroughly. I'll give you a case in point here. People don't realize that our country has been overthrown. They really think that they can vote their way out of the problems that we have by selecting the, the proper electors. Well, the country is being run by individuals that were not elected in the first place. They're making decisions 
that they do not have to be responsible for because people don't realize who it is that's even making the decision. They're sending us off to war. They're raping this country's wealth. They are manipulating its people. And they're bringing about a judgment big time between the banking, corporate, magnates, uh, the uh, intelligence agencies, the <coughs> basic deep state participants have an iron grip on this country. The only thing that's saving this country is the fact that the Second Amendment gives the individual the right to protect himself. Absolutely. They have not been able to neutralize that. Yet. I heard. We're working hard on that. I heard recently that uh, someone's introducing a bill to ban civil militia. So you know they're working really hard. Oh, certainly. They, do, they, ban, uh, they want to ban the sale of ammunition. Sure. They say, yeah, the Second Amendment tells you can have guns. It doesn't say anything about ammunition. Mm. You're trying to use that as a loophole. <coughs> and the average person is dolefully unaware of the danger that's taking place. Anyway, <coughs> Ezekiel 26, 17 to 21. They shall take up a lamentation for thee, and say to thee, How art thou destroyed, that was inhabited of seafaring men? The renowned city, which was strong in the sea, she and her inhabitants, which caused their terror, terror, terror. The Luciferians are going to terrorize the earth and the sea, devour it, take its inhabitants, and thoroughly <clears throat> corrupt them mentally, physically, emotionally, use them as their own uh, instruments of pleasure, destruction, whatever they want to do, <clears throat> which caused their terror to be on all that haunted. This is talking about the sea. The word haunt there is dwell. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the inhabitants that dwell in the land, the inhabitants that dwell in the sea are all going to come under the dominion of these Luciferian kings. The Luciferian kings are going to come under the influence of the harlot city and together they're going to dominate the human race into insignificance. They will be <clears throat> confined to one place they will be confined to one intelligence. They will be confined to a limited comprehension of the world around them. They will be manipulated, coerced into worshiping whoever it is that's dominating their life as a god. Their life is not their own. They're going to be told the parameters of what to believe and what not to believe when to believe it, what to do. And whether they're in the presence of these, these individuals or not, their programming is not going to vary. They're going to live according to what their limited beliefs tell them. What will be the result of that? The average individual is going to degenerate to a criminal mentality. Mm. He's going to be a, an idolater, a murderer, a fornicator, and a thief. That's the destiny of people who are willing to follow the broad path, which leads to destruction. <clears throat> Closing. <clears throat> After, this is about the midpoint of the tribulation period. After his ejection from the heavens, Lucifer will attack this great sea and its inhabitants. Revelation 12, verse 12. <clears throat> <clears throat> Revelation 12, verse 12. 
Remember we said many of the saints are going to be taken into heaven. These that missed the rapture. Later on, uh, there's going to be a revival in heaven. They're going to be persecuted and martyred. Afterwards, Satan is going to be cast down from the heavens to the earth. Notice what it says. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. <clears throat> the earth and the sea is now connected. Mm -hmm. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. He's going to try to wipe out everything he comes in contact with. Devour it, destroy it, or somehow render it inoperative. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. <clears throat> when the Lord comes back, he's going to liberate not only the earth, he's going to liberate the sea. You read about that in Isaiah. It talks about the sea kings waiting for his arrival. The inhabitants of the isles uh, looking upon him and worshiping him and adoring him. That's dealing with the inhabitants of this great sea. Radical change is taking place. The earth, it's as a matrix. Its connections are going to be restored with what formerly was connected to it in the heavens and the earth and the sea and the beings that inhabit all of them. This is going to be totally radically different than what you see today. So what we want to do, prepare our lives for the changes to come. We're going to be called upon to be able to help those who are struggling to deal with it. Faithful servant feeding those who have been given to him by the Lord to feed. This is one of the things you're going to be doing. You're going to be explaining the changes that are taking place because their world is going to collapse on them and they're not going to have any idea because <clears throat> they, they're definitely not going to hear it on 6 o'clock news. CNN isn't going to give them any enlightenment. MSNBC, none of the media. <laughs> CNN. So the sources that they depend upon aren't going to be there when these things take place. Only you and you, with the understanding that you have from the scriptures, are going to be able to soothe people who otherwise would not make it. Or would fall under the influence of one of the lying Luciferians that are more than willing to give them a, a, an explanation for what's going on <clears throat> at the cost of control and influence. <clears throat>